Well, I'm divorced from uh, the person that didn't show up. I and, see uh, that. Yes, and I'm here to ask the court for more spousal support. <laughs> I've went part-time on my job. I'm no lo longer working full-time. I've lost money. And the man's done nothing but cause me trouble since we've been divorced. He does all kinds of crazy stuff. Okay. And I, I deserve more money with all this harassment. Plus, I want a restraining order against him. This has to stop. My nerves are on edge. Can't take much more of it. But I think $100 a week extra for spousal support would be fair with all the, you know, the headaches he's given me and everything like that. It never fails to amaze me how they will divorce the man, but still think they are married to his wallet. He is not responsible for you. He doesn't owe you anything. And you are not entitled to any raises he gets at his job. You think it'll be fair? Yes, I've left him alone. I don't go around him. It's him doing the harassing. Okay. You're literally in court trying to harass his pockets for even more money. You know, if you qualify, obviously, for an increase in spousal maintenance, that is something that I can entertain. So let's talk about that. You said you believe $100, an extra $100 yes. a week is fair. Yes. Why do you believe that's fair? Well, like I said, uh, my wages have went down. I'm only uh, working part-time now. We're doing layoffs and things like that. So uh, You I'm, say your wages? Yeah, my wages okay. are going down. And his are going up because he still gets those two raises every year. He's been with that company forever. And uh, he makes good money. Uh, I don't make half of what he's making. It doesn't matter if he's the richest man in the world. You are not entitled to anything he has. She expects the system to require him to take care of her after she divorced him. Yet soon the judge will make her realize he is no longer responsible for her in any way. And uh, it's been really tough. I raised his children. I entertained his friends. I kept the house clean. I did everything that a good wife does. I think I deserve that extra $100 a week, and he can certainly afford it. What does he do for a living? Uh, he's a CEO for an oil company. Okay. Yeah. Makes really good money, bonuses and all that stuff. I mean, he's just raking it in. How much is your spousal maintenance right now? Uh, the spousal maintenance, it's about uh, 325 a week, maybe. Okay. He doesn't pay on time either. It's not always on time. So he is late on that. I think that should be a penalty right there. She gets an extra $15,000 a year just because she got married to this man. Yet, she's complaining and says she still needs more. Okay. I shouldn't be late. Okay. Um, what type of expenses do you have? Well, I have rent. I'm still making the payments on the house. We, uh, before we got uh, divorced, we had it uh, uh, redecorated, carpet paneling on the outside, I mean, uh, siding on the outside, all kinds of different things were added to it. And I'm making the payments on that still. I still got another five years for all those payments to be paid off. And then, you know, I got food. Uh, my car's paid off, but, you know, gasoline's expensive, uh, the upkeep of the car, things like that, electric bills, water, everything like that, not to mention entertainment. I mean, can't expect me to sit around the house and watch TV all the time. I mean, I go out from time to time. You know, that takes money. Now, when you all were divorced two years ago, outside of spousal maintenance, were you awarded the home? Yes, I was awarded the home. And he fought me on that, but I won it. Okay. So you were awarded the home. You don't have a lot of payments left on it. No. So I guess I'm confused as to why you're here, because you haven't said anything that will warrant an increase in your maintenance. Well, I went down on hours from work. I mean, that's a financial burden. Well, and you, okay, so you went down yeah, on hours. Yeah, my boss did, my boss did. I didn't do, do it, my boss made me take less hours. Right, but nothing has really changed with a lot of your expenses. You say you don't have a car note. You have a little bit left on your home to pay off. Sounds like you're mainly paying utilities and then a mortgage. And uh, the insurance for the car, I mean, the insurance is always expensive. Gasoline prices always going up. Right, but you had those expenses at the time that you were divorced, correct? Yes. When you all were divorced, did he have a 401k in existence? Yeah. And this is Texas, which is a community property state. So I'm assuming you 
at least got 50% of that. Yes, I did, but yes, I don't think no, that should be taken into consideration. No, ma'am. It was, it was taken into consideration the first time you received spousal maintenance. You can't have me taken into consideration again. That's not fair, and it's but, definitely but not the law. Him losing his house and half of everything he had, including his 401k, wasn't fair. Men have to stop putting themselves in these circumstances where they are at risk of losing half of everything they spent their life building just because the woman they married wants a divorce. His two raises every year. I don't get raises. My job's a very poor paying job. I'm uneducated. I mean, I'm gonna, you know, my age, I'm not gonna find much now. I have to stay where I'm at. I'm like, I feel like I'm trapped in this life. And Ms. Ellison, I feel like you came here to waste my time because I cannot give you an increase in spousal maintenance just because you're week? asking for it. No, ma'am. 25? Even $5. The answer is no. So is there anything else that you needed from me here today? Because I cannot grant you spousal maintenance just because he's made an increase from his wages. Well, I... If that were the standard, then everyone would come in court asking for an increase. Well, people need increases. I mean, well, women living you, on their I'm, own, I mean, that's hard. Let me ask you this question. When you all were divorced and you received half of his 401k, how much was that? That was a nice piece. Okay, what's a nice piece? Give me a number. About 250000 Are you serious? Men who have taken a break from dating, what positive changes have you experienced? You ask a great question, so let's talk about it. And ladies, let's be clear. Unlike the panda bears, I'm going to tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. First, men save a ton of money. Money that they can then invest in themselves rather than wasting it on expensive dates trying to meet the ridiculous expectations, oh, sorry, high standards that today's women have. Next, they have more time and energy. Trying to date today is mentally, physically, and emotionally exhausting for men. Men have found that by walking away, they can go do things that they enjoy instead of wasting hours swiping right on dating apps or trying to get the attention of women, most of whom think that they're entitled to attend when at best they themselves are three, four, or five. And finally, when men give up on dating and relationships, they find the one thing that they want more than anything else. The thing they rarely, if ever, get in relationships with women. They find peace and happiness. The bottom line, ladies, is this. You can keep doing what you're doing, blaming men for anything and everything, or you can take responsibility for your actions. Acknowledge that your expectations of perfection are completely absurd and take accountability for the way you've mistreated men all these years. The choice is yours, but let's be very clear, ladies. Until you decide to choose the latter, the reality is more and more men will continue to walk away and the likelihood that you'll end up alone is only going to increase. If you enjoyed this video, I promise you'll enjoy this next video. I will see you there.